never fails me And all my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God It's about my life
doors you open and shut Oh, oh to 
Thank you. 
Revelation 4, it says, come up here, come up into my realm, and I will instruct you what to do next. So we ascend the hill of the Lord tonight. We come up to your presence, to your holy mountain. Father, where the air is clear, we come up in your presence tonight, Father, and we just bless your name. Just lift your hands tonight. Just feel him drawing you straight up, straight up off the earth, just straight up into another realm of his presence.
God, I look to you, and I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision, to see things like you do. God, I look to you, cause you're where my health comes from. You give me wisdom, cause you know just what to do.
center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From the beginning to the end, it has always been and it will always be you, Jesus. Jesus. Sing it again, Jesus. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From the beginning to the end. From the beginning to the end. It has always been, it always been you, Jesus. Jesus. And nothing else. And nothing else matters. Nothing in this world will do. Jesus at the center. Jesus at the center. Everything revolves around you. Jesus.
Jesus be the center of your church. Jesus be the center of your church. And every knee will bow. And every tongue shall confess you, Jesus, the one true living God. Jesus, the one true living God.
marriages right now. If you're married, just touch your spouse. We just speak restoration, even what this year has um, been rough. And we just speak renewal and restoration to every marriage here right now. Father, they would be literally closer than ever. Closer than ever. We just speak uh, molded together, Father, that you just let anything that has tried to come in the way of marriages just be settled and swept away, Father. That your miraculous healing balm come and heal marriages right now, Father. Yeah, 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 yeah. person here that's a mom or a dad that's your love God I just hear the Lord the Lord saying you are enough you are enough thank you Jesus thank you Jesus you're doing just fine just fix your eyes well you're doing just fine lift up your eyes Boy, oh, you're doing just fine. Lift up your eyes. That's where your help comes from. That's where your help comes from. Yeah, you're doing just fine. Lift up your eyes to the hills. Oh, you're doing just fine. Lift up your eyes. Sing it again. Oh, you're doing just fine. Sing it over you. Lift up your eyes. That's where your help comes from. That's where your help comes from. I just saw a picture of a liquor cabinet, and I saw the Lord just put a lock on the liquor cabinet for a while. So I just released that. Whatever in our lives have been filling our lives with something that you should have been filling, Father. We just release that to you. We just come back to your heart fully, God, not looking for relief from elsewhere, but from you, Holy Spirit. We just ask that you fill any place in us that is lacking in your presence, God. Fill, fill, fill. We just break shame. We just leave it in the dust, Father. We thank you right now just for full restoration to the Father's heart for all that you have for us, Jesus. There's no one like you. There's no one. 
someone like you My Jesus, my friend, my Father How I love your presence Oh, how I love you How I love you, Jesus I'm coming back for more How I love your presence How I love you, Lord And how I come to you like a child Take all I have 
I come to you like a child Take all that I have Coming like a child mm-hmm. Just want my father Just want my father touch from your father just one touch from your father Jesus coming like a child coming like a child
our prayer tonight. Lord, we want you to be exalted in every aspect of our lives, through our lives on this earth. Lord, you're speaking to us. Lord, I pray that you would continue the work that you're starting in us. Lord, truly, when we leave tonight, that there is a divine awareness, a transformation that happens from the inside out where we we truly understand that it's not by might nor by power, but by your spirit, Lord, everything that we do, every everything that we do. And that our sole purpose on this earth, Lord, as your ministers is to bring your name great glory and to glorify you. So Lord, through your word tonight, continue to speak to us, transform us. Holy Ghost, I pray that you would do what only you can do. Take one word, split it up however many different ways of the people that are in this room and speak specifically to each person. Lord, we've had a year and it's taken that to remind us that this is only about you. This is, this whole thing is only about you and for your glory. And Lord, if we don't get this, there ain't no hope. So do whatever you need to do to reawaken, re-envision, reinvigorate, reframe, realign us, our hearts, our spirits. be in the slipstream of your flow. Father, you haven't stopped moving across this earth. Just let us get in the slipstream of what it is that you're doing, Lord, and help us to bring others into that slipstream, Lord. Amen. Amen. I just want to get to the Word, and I've got something in my spirit. Did that? Oh, here. Sorry. Hi, everyone. I'm so grateful. I'm just going to kind of jump in. I've always wanted to be part of the Bethel worship team, so I feel like I've achieved one of my goals. I hope someone took a picture and consented to my Hillsong team. So anyways, <laughs> I'm joking. I, I don't sing. I never have. But um, if you're taking notes on your phone or whatever you're doing, and I think it'll just continue with what has happened. I didn't even know. Jen just called and said, come to Nashville, and I don't know who's going to be in a room But um, let's just kind of, we're going to do a a series of things of what might the Lord be doing. Because like you, um, I wasn't exempt from 2020 coming into 2021. It's it's about a year ago, I think now, we're coming to the end of February. So I flew back, I I did Passion, uh, whenever that was. (laughs) What year? 2020. So in, um, this is last year. I went from Passion, like so many of you, to... uh, uh, then I went to the Send in Brazil, and it was amazing. I thought this was the beginning of the revival I'd been believing for for years. I've been serving Jesus for over three decades. Uh, got saved in the back of Sydney, Australia. Went to Hillsong before it was Hillsong, when it was Hills Christian Life Centre in a warehouse, not much bigger than this, in nights that were just like this. And so I don't really have to have a lot of faith to believe for revival because I've lived through one in my lifetime. I've lived from being in a shed in the back of Sydney, Australia, before any of you knew any of it, and watch God do what only God has done over um, 30 odd years and watched a bunch of people that just got saved. Man, we didn't, we're not the ones with the degrees or the theology degrees or the smarts, but we had a passionate heart after God and, um, a desperation for God, and out of that, I've watched what the Lord has done. So it's something really fascinating when you have lived, when you were a kid, a kid that was just in so much sin, you got saved, you walked into a warehouse that wasn't much different to this in 1989, on the last um, Sunday in January 1989, and just a few hundred people in a room, and then here I am 30 odd years later and go, wow, I've seen what God can do when people truly choose to honour God (laughs) and when you truly do choose to follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit and when you truly do choose to make it all about Him. 
Uh, one of the benefits of growing up as an Australian Christian is there was no Christian subculture. And so uh, there weren't enough Christians. There was no Christian industry of anything, uh, whether it was music or whether it was um, books or anything, because there wasn't enough Christians to buy anything. So everyone was a heathen. It was awesome. So you, all you had to do was actually be about the father's business because there was no other business. So you had to be about the father's business, which was going about seeing people saved. And um, there was nothing else. You, could, you better have been anointed with the power of the Holy Ghost because you had nothing else going for you, man. You turned up. You had to, uh, this, we had to learn um, because there was nothing else. So you had to get a word of knowledge so you could freak people out so they'd listen to you. And you had to get a prophetic word or a word of wisdom because nobody would listen to you any other way. And it was like, oh my gosh, they're reading my mail. They must know a God or something. And out of that, I've watched what the Lord's done. And out of that, I've watched a lot of interesting things in the body of Christ too. And so I feel like the Lord gave us a, a beautiful time out for the last year. So like, you know what, why don't you go to your room? You know, I've got a couple of kids when they were little. I would always go, why don't you go to your room and think about that? And then when you've thought about that, why don't you come out and, um, and tell mummy what you thought <laughs> what, what, about what you had done or what you had said. And I feel like the Lord was like, why don't you go to your rooms and think about that? And then we came out and he's like, you know, you haven't thought about that really well. How about you go back in? And um, I'm from California, so we've been sent back a lot. But anyway, so there, there's a lot of going back to, to our rooms. And, um, but, but I feel like uh, we're about to, to come out and perhaps the, the revelation above all else that um, I think those of us that are ministers are going to come out with <laughs> is the fact that um, it's, it's Jesus and the power of the Holy Ghost. And, and there really is nothing else but Jesus and the power of the Holy Ghost. And when we were singing and going off and singing about no other God, do you, do you know it's not gonna be that much longer before we sing that stuff and a whole lot of the world is not really cool with us singing, there is no other God but you. Uh, there is, uh, we, we, we've all gotten sidetracked with a whole lot of other issues and, and we, many of us think we're more compassionate than Jesus and so we think we're gonna love you um, and excuse that more than Jesus does because we know compassion better than Jesus. He didn't know what he was doing when he said stuff in the gospel. So we're gonna actually be more loving and, and accepting than Jesus because that's, that's, that's what we're gonna do. And Jesus is like, that's awesome, do what you want. But the one thing that's not up for grabs is going to be the Lordship of Jesus. <laughs> and I'm, I'm listening to the sound coming out of you guys, and I'm loving it, incidentally. Um, and I'm thinking, oh, it's going to be costly to sing that soon. It's going to be actually really, really costly um, because that is what is up for grabs. I'm going to read you something from Isaiah 60. And if you're taking notes, the word for tonight, and um, I, I believe is like called the morning after. And, um, and, you know, 2020, we all know, intense. Global pandemic and racial injustice and political upheaval and economic upheaval. And I mean, it was just relentless. And if you believe in the sovereignty of God, you cannot believe that it was by accident that, that God allowed it. Um, I'm a bit excited because I'm weird because I really do believe in the book of Acts where the Bible says that God chooses the times and the seasons. Um, and and the boundaries that he places us in out of all of eternity he thought, awesome, I'm going to pluck you out of eternity. I'm going to position you in time in 2020. I'm going to give you gifts and talents for the purpose of serving your generation. And you are my plan A for the planet in 2020, 2021, 2022. Like we are God's plan A. So this is not by default. This is by design. And so I'm like, okay, God, you did it all. And you figured out of all of the people in all of, all of eternity, we are the ones, are the carriers of your presence to this generation to carry your light to this world. The mandate hasn't finished. The, the, the mission hasn't finished. We've got to be about the Father's business. None of that has changed because of a global pandemic or because of economic instability or because of the things that are happening all around the world. The mandate is still the same. Go into all the world and make disciples. And I think we are finally understanding that it's time to make Jesus' last commandment our first priority. And what has happened is we've gotten so caught up with a whole lot of other stuff. And He's going, would you get back? to what my first priority is. Because see, when Jesus died and was crucified, rose again, you would have thought He would have gone straight up to the Father after all that time away from Him. 
But instead of going straight up to the Father, He detoured via planet Earth and said, I need to pause and come back for a minute because I need to give you your marching orders before I go back to heaven to be seated at the right hand of the Father. And guess what? Your marching orders are to go into all of the world and make disciples. That's actually the mandate that I have given you to make disciples of the nations of the earth. We've messed that up, wouldn't you think? Just a little bit. He's going, I want you to go and I'm going to give you my spirit to empower you to do what you could never do in your own strength ever. So I'm putting my spirit in you so that you can go forth in the power of my spirit and go and make disciples of all of the nations. And guess what? Then I'm going to come back. It's not all going to be fixed this side. Your shoulders are not too big enough to carry the burden of what's going on on this earth. There is so much injustice, so much pain, so much suffering. Listen, you can try to do what you want. Your shoulders are not broad enough to carry the burden. I carried it at Calvary. So your job by the power of my spirit is to go forth into the world and make disciples of the nations. That's our job. And we've picked so many other things we want to do. And Jesus is like, you know, could we get back to what this whole thing is about? And so in Isaiah, you're all Americans, so we'll say Isaiah. (laughs) Isaiah. It's so cute, Isaiah. Okay, so Isaiah. Everyone say Isaiah. Isaiah. Isaiah, mate. Isaiah, mate. Arise. Shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will rise, arise upon you, and His glory will be seen upon you. And nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes, we sung that tonight, all around, and see. They all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from afar and your daughters shall be carried on the hip. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and exult because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels, I can live without them, shall cover you. The young camels of the Midian and Epaph, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense. They shall bring good news the praises of the Lord. We can go on. But I said it some the morning after because when the Israelites came after 70 years in Babylonian exile, they they came back to Israel. And then they were thinking they were coming back to what would be normal. I mean, they had dreamt. The prophet had spoken to them. They had a vision of what it was gonna be like when they went back and they went back and the temple was in ruins. Other people were living in their houses. They were surrounded by their enemies. There was threat of war in in the atmosphere and the Persians were reigning. It did not look like the light was upon them. It did not look like people were gonna come from all over the nations of the earth. It did not look like they had anything to offer. It's like they came back, they expected to see one picture and they after 70 years of exile and what they saw was this foggy mess. It was like, a, like you gotta be kidding me, what is this? It could be 2021. It could be like, hang on a minute, we stepped into this year and. And we thought it would look a little bit different, but the the fog still seems to be around us. It's it's like, whoa, we started with a bang. And here we are six weeks in and it's like, we're, we're really not sure what is going on day to day in so many different spheres. Some of you are booking stuff, some aren't, some don't know what's going on, what's opening, what's not opening, how long is it gonna open for, what's gonna happen, what is going on? It is really hard to have any sense of vision All we're seeing is this this cloud and the cloud lifts every now and again and we get a glimpse and we think this is it and then it's like, no, no, it's not. It's where I live in Newport Beach. There's a a marine layer that comes in in California and um, if I'm walking along the beach, I can see Catalina Island but when that marine layer is in, you can't see any, you can barely see your hand in front of your face. Now the thing is, I know Catalina Island's there. (laughs) But while the marine layer is there, everything is gloomy, everything is foggy, I can barely see my hands. And, and, and that's when I'm walking by faith. That's when I know that there's something on the other side and it's into this situation that they've come back, the Israelites have come back, the children of Israel, and they're like thinking, we thought we were coming back to normal. And the prophet's like, no, 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 there is no normal, there's, there's a new normal. 
And this is the morning after the fog. I know you've been in captivity. I know you've been locked in your room. I know that there's been challenges everywhere and you're looking around and in the natural, you're like, this is a mess. How are things going to happen? He goes, in the midst of all of that, I've got a couple of words for you. Arise and shine. And as we've had the shift in 2021, that's the word to us, the church. It's like, you know what? It's time to arise and it's time to shine. Yes, there's still a fog, but it's time to reawaken your vision, to be reawakened to your purpose, to be reawakened to the promises of God, to be reawakened to the things that God has for us. The vision hasn't changed just because the marine layer is in. Yes, there's a marine layer, but what you saw is still from God. And all the promises of God are in Christ. Jesus, yes and amen. And our promises are anchored in Christ. He is anchored behind the veil. That anchor is firm and secure. It doesn't matter what's happening economically or politically or environmentally. Our anchor is firm and secure. His name is Jesus. It's Jesus. So because of that, just because a marine layer is in doesn't change what God's spoken to us. Just because a marine layer has come in doesn't mean that The promises of God have in any way changed. I want to read it to you from the Amplified Bible. It says, Arise from the depression and prostration in which circumstances have kept you. Rise to new life. Be radiant with the glory of the Lord. For your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. See, the good thing that's happened for those of us that have had ears to hear and eyes to see this year, this past year, hopefully we've been reawakened to the fact that we are sons and daughters of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hopefully we've been reawakened to the fact that we are citizens of heaven and just residents here on earth. Hopefully we've been reawakened to the fact that we are on mission with God to outwork the purposes of God here on earth as it is in heaven. But this is not our home. Hopefully we've reawakened to the fact that we are living between the two advents of Christ. You see, when Isaiah the prophet was saying this stuff, they were still waiting for Jesus to come. This was a a prophetic decree the light's coming. Jesus is coming. The Messiah's coming. Well, guess what? If He was telling them in the midst of this brokenness, you ought to have hope because a Messiah is coming. Well, we've already seen Him. He's already risen and He's coming back. We ought to be the most hope-filled, the most faith-filled, the most purpose-filled, the most light-filled people on the earth because we're living between the two advents of Christ. Not only... Do we know that He's risen? We're filled with His Spirit. We are the church on the earth that is filled with the Spirit of God. And you know what the early church did? Kept pointing people to the fact that He's coming again. If you're wondering what our heart, a lot of us, we got all freaked out about talking about this stuff because I know late great planet earth and everything and we're like left behind, we're all still traumatised. Okay, so I get it. I get why we're all still traumatised. But let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater. You read Thessalonians, you read throughout the New Testament. What did the early church do? They're they're telling people, He's coming again. There was so much persecution. There was so much suffering. Maybe it's time for us, the church, to awaken again. And not this like left behind fear, blow up late great planet Earth stuff. I want some of you guys to write hope-filled, faith-filled, beauty-filled songs about the coming of the Lord, because that's our hope. Because we're going to do our bit to bring God's kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. But you know what? If we didn't need a new heaven and a new earth, Jesus wouldn't need to come back. But the very fact that we do need a new heaven and a new earth suggests to me that our ultimate hope is an eternal hope. So we got to get people's eyes off their temporal circumstances, off their temporal losses, off their temporal defeats, off their temporal disappointments, off their temporal discouragement, off their temporal disillusionment. And we need to lift our eyes to the hills. We've been singing about lifting our eyes. There's an eternal hope and He is coming back. And that is good news. That is the Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not only that He died for our sins and rose again, but He is coming back again. That is the hope of the church of Jesus Christ. And y'all, we're gonna keep having the divisiveness and the chaos and the anger that we're seeing on the earth today. If we don't lift our eyes a little bit and get an eternal perspective on all of this. Because there is only so much 
we're going to sort out. <laughs> but human nature is sin-filled. That's why not only did we need a Saviour, but He is coming back. <laughs> And when we act like it really matters, it's going to be amazing how it matters to people. And that's, people will be drawn to that radiant beauty of Jesus. See, in the 80s, we thought, let's freak everyone out and tell them we're going to blow the earth up. And, you know, late, great, see you later. You're going to be left behind. Don't go to the movies because you're going to be busted and you're going to go to hell and, you know, you're going to be left behind. So everyone's so traumatised because of all of that. Nobody's talking about the fact that there is an eternity that Jesus is coming back. That doesn't excuse us from responsibility here on earth. It's actually the opposite. I don't know how you could be fueled to do good works here on earth if you do not, if you are not fueled with a vision of a, a resurrected Saviour that's going to return back to this planet. See, to me, it doesn't make me not want to make this world a better place. It makes me want to make this world a better place because I know that He's coming back. So Isaiah says, you know what? I'm addressing you because you're, you're in a mess. It's the morning after. But just like He spoke to them at this time, I, I wanna speak to us at this time and say, here we are in February, 2021. And I wanna say to the body, it's time to get out of the fog. <laughs> it, it, it's time to arise. It's a time to rise up and get out of the fog and get out of that marine layer because God's saying, look, I'm not just bringing back my previous glory. Did you see the list? Oh, oh no, there's great blessing coming. There's great abundance coming. There's great provision coming. And people from around the world are gonna look and say, what is that that is different upon you? What is on you? Why do you have joy that I don't have? Why do you have peace that I don't have? Why do you have hope that I don't have? Why are you able to love in a way that I'm not able to love? Why is your source not running dry? Why is your supply not running out? And you go, it's the glory of the Lord. It's got nothing to do with me. The glory of the Lord has risen upon me. He says, let your light shine. And we've got to get up because the fact is, I think we are on the verge in the body of just getting a little bit either comfortable sitting back or we're so hopeless that we're forgetting we've got the power source that the world's waiting for. See, this, the lights are on here because someone, there's a power box and someone flicked a switch. And I feel an urgency in my spirit now in the body to go, listen, man, we've got to start flicking some switches here, okay? The, the power's all connected. You've got everything that you need in Christ. See, it's one thing to sit about, sing about, He's all I need and I've got everything I need in Him. But we need to remember again who we are and what we have in Him. And I'm hoping this time around, we're not going to worry about all the other stuff and who gets what and who gets what award. Listen, this is what I want to say to you. you. You can't get any higher than where you are. You and I are seated in heavenly places at the right hand of the Father. And we are filled with every spiritual blessing that we need for everything. So I'm kind of like, there is no higher to go. There is no greater award that you can get. There is no place. You go, man, I just want to keep going up the chart. You can't go higher than seated at the right hand of the Father, seated in heaven. There's nowhere. The only place that you and I can go from where we are is down. Down. See, if you and I truly understand who we are in Christ and what we have in Christ, assuming a posture of humility like Jesus, who did not consider it himself robbery to be equal with God, but made himself a servant. He humbled himself. See, Scripture says humble yourself. Scripture doesn't say humble each other. With our beautiful, twi- beautiful our, our, our social media culture, we think, oh man, I'm just gonna humble you. It's my prophetic gift. It's not in the Bible. There's no humble each other in the Bible. There is humble yourself. It doesn't mean to think less of yourself. It does mean to think of yourself less. It does mean that there's a lost and a broken world and God wants us to engage and to make disciples of the nations, to bring justice where there's injustice, hope where there's hopelessness, life where there's no life. But you can only do that 
when you know who you are so you're not spending and wasting your whole life on earth trying to prove who you are? See, when you waste your one and only life on this planet trying to prove who you are, but when you can walk in humility, not arrogancy. The old normal was, man, I'm arrogant. Bless God, I know who I am in God. (laughs) No, no, you're just so insecure and arrogant. But when you truly know, I'm seated at the right hand of the Father in heavenly places. I have access to every... I can't go anywhere. This is as high as I'm ever going to get. Doesn't matter what award I get. Doesn't matter what... I'm as high as I'm ever going to get. I'm already there. So from there, there's only one place I can go, down. So I'm stepping in, filled with the power of the Spirit, choosing to humble myself in the sight of the Lord. How weird that when I do that in due season, He lifts me up. How weird in this upside down kingdom. But see, when you understand that the glory of the Lord is upon you and the light of the Lord is within you, you don't need any showcase lights because I carry the light of Christ. Same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Guess what? He lives in me. And it's not just hype. Uh, Hopefully you realise that because we weren't on the road with our gigs and our shows and our bands and whatever, so it was just in the bedroom. I don't know about you, but the same Spirit that showed up with me when I was in these arenas last year is the same Spirit that was in my bedroom. Same Spirit that helped me read this word, same Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives on the inside of us. So I don't know really what we're waiting for. Because if we're still in a fog in February 2021, I don't know what hope the world's got. Because supposedly the light of Christ is in us, the glory of the Lord is upon us. So why are we walking around like we're in a fog? Why are we walking around like we've forgotten who we are and whose we are? Why are we walking around like we don't know what we've got in Him? Why are we walking around with a lack of vision and a lack of purpose? Just because a show's been cancelled doesn't mean my purpose is being cancelled. And God's saying like, would you see? It, it, it is the morning after. You, you, you've got to rise and shine. We've got agency in this, guys. We've got agency. Well, if the Lord just wanted to do it, the Lord would just do it. The Lord's like, I did it. I did it. Now, would you get up? The prophet says to them, I I want you to rise and I want you to shine and I want you to start facing this day. I want you to stop tweeting and Instagramming and TikTok thing, all your fear and doubt and negativity and all your feels. Keep your feels. State some truth, not your feels. State them truth about who you are in Him, what you have in Him, where we're going in Him, the fact that all things are reconciled in Him. Let's start stating some truth and declaring and decreeing some things into the atmosphere. So there's a re-Jesusing happening. (laughs) In our reawakening, it's like, oh, all I have is you. That's right, because the world shut down. Oh, guess what? That's enough. It's not just a cute lyric. It's actually real. So I've got to arise and shine in the midst of all of that. So I'm just going to give you a few things. How, How do you arise and shine? Well, the first thing, of course, you've got to ensure that you are connected to Jesus. So glad this last year happened in some ways. Not not the pain and the suffering and the loss and the grief, of course, not that. But the fact that the Lord pressed pause. Let me flatten the whole earth and just so you could all get realigned again. So glad. My church get realigned again and remember what you're all here for. And it's given us the opportunity to see, are we really connected to Jesus? Are we truly connected? Because it's one thing to be connected to a Christian industry. Oh, it's another thing to be connected to Jesus. And let me just say the way the Lord ain't playing with what He is cleaning house with, He ain't playing. And so saying, you know what? Are you truly connected to Jesus? Because Jesus is the light of the world, not my coolness. Jesus is the light of the world. And so Jesus is the light of the world. He says in John 15, without me, you can do nothing. But see, a lot of us forgot that because we forgot Jesus in the equation over the last few years and we were doing a lot without Him. 
And he's like, how'd that work for you? Where did that get you? Because without me, you can do nothing. And I think we're reawakening to that truth that without Him, (laughs) we really can do nothing. Like really, really for the stuff that really, really matters. And so we must stay committed to Him, stay connected to Him. If we don't, we're not shining. We might have a spotlight shining on us, but we are not radiating any of the light of Christ. And so you wonder why people are coming into our churches and into our worship meetings and into our, and they're coming in bound and they're leaving bound because they've never encountered the light that sets them free. They've seen a light on us, but there's no power emanating from us that would see people set free. And so then it just becomes a, we don't, we don't even need God. You just need a formula. You just need a formula. And I think the Lord's like, you know, I'm about done with your formulas because I love my people too much and my people are bound and my people are dying. My people are addicted and my people are just m- messed up and I want to set them free. So I need my ministers to actually get back to know what this is all about and they better know what the true light is because if they can't tell the difference between the light that is on them and the light that is in them, their world will collapse. And most of us don't know the difference. If the light that is on you is stronger than the light that is in you, your world will collapse. And that's what we're seeing. Left, right and centre in the body of Christ because we've had a lot of spotlights on us and haven't developed the light that is within us. And that light within us, the prophet says, arise, shine, for the light has come. But it can't be our light. It's got to be God's light. That's the only thing that has power to set people free. You and I are custodians of that power. Jesus said in Matthew 28, All authority is His and He gave it to us. But when you take what He hasn't given you and you make something up in its place, you end up with a weak, anemic, powerless Christian subculture that we've had for a really long time. And Jesus says, I wonder if you would take the power I've given you and allow that power to flow through you to see people set free. The thing we have to do is not only ensure that we stay connected to Jesus to rise and shine, we need to ensure that we're connected to the Word of God. The Word of God. Let me tell you, anytime the enemy wants to undermine the power of God, he will try to undermine the authority of the Word of God. It is not new. It is not new. And listen, I may be one of only a few people that still believe traditional, historical, orthodox Christianity, but I'm going to my grave, believing that God's Word is what God's Word says, that God meant what He said when He did it. I don't care if it's not cool. I want power. And I want to stay connected to His Word. I don't want cool, I want power. I want power. And this Word is living. This Word is active. This Word is sharper than any two-edged sword. This Word has power. I want the power of God's Word to have the same power in my mouth that it has in His mouth, but it won't if you don't believe what this says. When you try to dilute it and change it. And we will be set apart. Those of us that go, "I, I believe this thing. And it's not cool. You know, Jeremiah 15, 16, he said, Your words were found and I ate them. And your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. Your words were found and I ate them. They became, a, someone needs to write a song about that. They, they became a joy and a delight to my heart. I ate them, I ate this thing. What we do is we find a few scriptures that we like and use them to write a lyric. And God's like, Really? I want power. Psalm 119.30, the unfolding of your Word gives light. That's what gives light. That's why the world's in darkness. Because we Christians are trying to minimise and dilute and excuse and cut out bits of the Word. And then they're wondering, why can't I? Thy Word is what? A lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. 
And the glory of the Lord will shine through you. Let your light shine. It's the Word of God. You're wondering. There is more spiritual and biblical illiteracy on the world, in the world today. It's incomprehensible to me. More access to the Word. But because we don't want to do what it says, we either ignore it or change it. And then we wonder why the world's in darkness. He says, oh no, this, this unfolding Word. Ooh, light, 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 light. Light, light, light. So you've got to stay to arise and shine. You won't do it if you don't stay connected to Jesus. You won't do it if you don't stay consuming the Word of God. You won't do it if you're not committed to God's work. Matthew 5.16, let your light shine before men that they might what? See your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. See, we're not saved. We know that. We're saved by grace through faith. Ephesians 2.8. But we're saved by grace through faith for good works. Ephesians 2, 9 and 10. For we are His workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus for good works that He prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So it's not enough to just sing love songs to God. We must be engaged in the mission of God here on earth. And so we have to be committed to God's work it's a good work. Isn't it interesting when Jesus said, lift your light, lift, well, lift up, well, keep, I don't know, whoever did the lift up thing, you're on, I'm in that zone, I'm in that. Lift up your eyes. He says, lift up your eyes. The fields are ripe for harvest. Jesus said this 2,000 years ago. You all don't have to pray. Is the harvest ready? Jesus like, I told you that 2,000 years ago. Seriously? 2,000 years, the, the harvest has been ready for 2,000 years. Jesus said, lift up your eyes to the field. Fields are ripe for harvest. And then he says, harvest are plentiful. And then, isn't it interesting? He doesn't say, but the Christians are few. But Christian music is few. Christian books, there's not enough. Christian churches, there's not enough. Christian in so whatever, no, no, no. He says, no, 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 the harvest is plentiful, but the workers a few because we don't have anyone that wants to work we don't want to be day labourers for Jesus man we want to be superstars for Jesus and Jesus goes I'm not asking for stars man I want labourers you know what a day labourer does comes and stands at the side of the street you wait for the truck what am I doing today okay here I go someone else did that in the worship set whatever maybe it was earlier this afternoon I can't remember someone went off about whatever you tell me to do whatever you tell me to do That's what a day labourer does. And in fact, while we're all so busy (laughs) trying to build our brands and trying to get our little blue checks, we don't worry about a heart check, but I want a blue check. And then, you know, we just want to, while we're trying to build our, our, Jesus is like, anyone want to be a labourer? Got a lot of work for labourers. A lot of work for day labourers. The harvest is plenty for the labourers. The workers are few. So you want to stay connected. You stay connected to Jesus, connected to His Word, connected to His work and cultivate righteous living. Poor oh, Christine, you mean it matters? <laughs> Does sanctification matter? Yes, honey, because we wouldn't be here if it didn't. Because listen, if it really didn't matter, what we need to do is come out in an altar call, get saved and then say, look, I need you to go home to glory really quick. But Jesus is like, no, I'm not taking you the minute I save you because I'm going to work my will in and through you and conform you to my image and I want you to become righteous so you're taking on my righteousness and you're becoming righteous see what's interesting to me is like we like to hide behind the righteousness of God and say well you know it's not me it's Jesus it's his righteousness therefore I can go do whatever I want all that shows me is that you don't know what righteousness is Because if you knew what righteousness was and it mattered to you that you had Jesus' righteousness, you would want more of that and to become more like that. But the fact that you think, I've got that fire insurance so I don't go to hell when I die and now I'm going to go and do whatever I want, it means you don't know what righteousness is. That's what it means. And so we need to be committed to cultivating righteous living. The Bible says in Proverbs 4.18, remember our whole theme is arise, shine, light. 
It says, the path of the righteous, like the light of dawn, shines brighter and brighter until full day. And I find the more I walk by God's grace in righteousness, the brighter the light is. And when the whole world's in a fog and they can't see and they're like, Chris, I don't get why you're still moving forward. That you can see and you've got vision and look what's happening. Yes, because the path of the righteous, it's, it's not me. I'm not, I'm not like awesome. But I'm saying, you know what? To the best of my ability, I want to be conformed and transformed to the image of Jesus. I want to become like Him and therefore more of His light can shine through me. A lot of us, we're carriers of the light, but there's so much unrighteousness, the light can't come through. And then you're wondering, why can't I see? I have two good days, three bad days, two good days, six bad days. Like an emotional yo-yo. I don't believe we need to do that. Not even as artists. I really don't. I believe that we can walk with consistency. And His righteous light can shine through us. But we need to want to pursue Righteousness, walking in righteousness is how we flourish. Walking in righteousness is another way that we're going to be set apart in the day and the hour in which we live. In a very unrighteous world, we're called to be in it, not of it. And I think during this divine reset, the Lord has gone, I need you to think about some things. Because instead of being in it, but not of it, you became of it and you were no longer in it. There was no difference between you and the world same aspirations, same heart desires, in some cases, same habits, same addictions. I'm not saying that changes God's love for us. That's not the conversation I'm having. I'm talking about our effectiveness to arise and shine. And to, there comes a time where my kids come to me, mommy, I love you, mommy, I love you, when they're little. And especially when they didn't want to clean their room. They suddenly loved me a whole lot more and wanted to sit in my bed and I don't want to deal with some mummy. And, and I think God's a bit at the place going, you know what? Really glad you love me. Except I think now this is more about you not cleaning your room than loving me. So at some point, we got to stop just singing, come and sit at the feet of Jesus and He just loves you. Come as you are, absolutely, but don't stay as you are. Don't stay as you are. There's got to be a calling up. Not out of guilt, shame and condemnation, but so that people fulfil their purpose and their destiny. And there's a calling up. And then our power of life and death is in our tongue and in our thumbs. and in our thumbs. When I see what is being posted, I don't know if anything grieves me more, but everyone will be held accountable before God for every empty, not only word, but tweet. I don't know why we live like God doesn't read it, God doesn't see it, and why it doesn't matter. I don't know why we live, because what we don't understand anymore is the fear of the Lord. I'm not talking about a fear like, oh my gosh, old school. I'm just taking the fear of the Lord is what? The beginning of all wisdom. I have spent the last year going to my husband. I go, people have lost their mind. People are dumb. But there's no wisdom on the earth. There's no wisdom. That's because there's no fear of the Lord. There's no understanding who he, who, who he is. And when there's no fear of the Lord, there is no wisdom. And the thing that is lacking, when I look out at the social media landscape, I'm like, there's no discernment and there's no discretion. There's no discernment and there's no discretion because there is no wisdom and there is no wisdom because there is no fear of the Lord. And so the power, if there's power of life and death in the tongue, Listen, I'm old school, man. I'm old. I'm 55 this year. So I got saved in my early 20s. And I so was taught the power of declaring and decreeing the Word of God and framing your world with the words that you speak and shaping. And I was probably over the top. But you know what? I'm about to go back into over the top mode. Because when I'm looking at what's going on out there and I'm thinking people don't count, I'm going to go back to cray cray mode. I really am. And I mean, I was not happy to be around in those days because I was like, every word mattered. And I would read scriptures like, you will be judged for every idle word. And I'd be like, I have never regretted a word I haven't said. I've never regretted a thing I haven't tweeted. So just don't tweet it and don't say it. It's amazing 
how much more peace you have. It's amazing how much more connected to Him you stay. This is not, I just felt to share this with you all. And um, it's not even, connect, the band can come because I don't know what I'm doing or finishing. But it, um, there's a scripture in John 6.66. 6, so you already know it's a bit scary because it's John 6.66. 6, 6, okay, so. So where do I think we are prophetically? I think we are in the morning after. I, I, I think it is time to arise, shine. It, 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 you know, in the natural, at the same as when the prophet was declaring this in Isaiah 60, the temple looks like it's in ruins. In the natural, enemies look like they're surrounding. In the natural, they're under foreign occupation. And yet in the middle of all that, the prophet says, no, 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 no. Arise, shine for the glory of the Lord's risen. There's, there's light. And we, we in 2021 are in similar circumstances externally. But it's like, no, no, no. It's the morning after. You're not in exile anymore. You're back. I know it's not like what you thought, but you're not in exile. It's not 2020. You are not in exile. So you have to arise even if the marine layer is still in and you have to know what's on the other side and lead people there. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm like, I said that the shifts happen and I'm going forward. I'm like, I don't know if anyone's coming, but I'm going. So this is it. And to the best of my abilities, I stay connected to Jesus as I stay connected to the Word of God, as I stay connected um, and be, uh, hopefully by the grace of God and walking in righteousness, as I am um, being careful about what's coming out of my mouth. And I, I am going to be believing God. This Word is going to be illuminating a path for multitudes. I'm believing for more than I've ever seen in my life. Millions to come to faith in Christ. The greatest revival we've ever seen. I I really am believing we're on the edge of that. But it's not going to come if we're not utterly connected. Because it's His light, not our light. It's not our show. It's not our gift. It's not our talent. It didn't work for us. We had the best of all of that for the last 40 years in America. Where'd that get us? Not really that far. Something was off. If after all of our music, all of our books, all of our CDs, all of our conferences, all of our churches, if that's where we ended up in 2020, God help us. Something was off. Light, life, power, Jesus. So I've come back. But I'm not going back to the stuff that wasn't working before. <laughs> I'm not just not, I don't want anything to do with that. I want Jesus. And Jesus in this <laughs> very poignant discourse in John 6, 66, he says in verse 60, when many of his disciples heard it, they said, this is a hard saying. I mean, this is like full on, okay? So Jesus just feeds the 5,000 and then he gives his teaching on I am the bread of life. It's pretty intense. It's like everyone thinks he's, you've got to be accountable to be a Christian because it's about eating my flesh, drinking my blood. Like it's intense, okay? And so he goes through this extremely intense saying. I mean, they love the miracles and a lot of us, man, that's us. And I just felt this for us in this moment in John 6, starts with feeding the multitude. So signs, wonders, miracles, the multiplication of the fish and the loaves. I mean, it's awesome. And I love all that stuff too. Straight from that, we go into this all of life. Jesus is like, man, you can't even be my disciple basically unless I permeate every part of you. I come in and you eat my flesh, drink my blood. Well, we have it in communion, but, but it's every part of your life. It's what you watch, what you listen to, how you spend your money, who you hang out with, what you tweet, what you say. It's not just what you're doing here. It's what you're doing there. And what you're saying here, all of it, it's this all of life consuming. So it's, yes, it's the miracles on the mountain, but it's every part of you after that. He finishes this saying, so intense. And it says, when many of His disciples heard it, they said, this is a hard saying. Who can listen to it? But Jesus, knowing in Himself that His disciples were grumbling about this, said to them, do not take offence at this. Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where He was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning those who did not believe and who it was that would betray Him. And He said, This is why I told you that no one can come to Me unless it is granted to Him by the Father. 
And then this is the verse, John 6, 66. After this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. After this, hard saying. And I think after this year, people can use whatever phrase they want to use. Some call it deconstruction. Some call it I've been hurt by the church. Some call it it's just too hard. It's too legalistic. It's too, insert whatever you want. But it may as well be that. that day, many turned around. <laughs> this is what I really like. And I'm saying all this to you to say this to all of us. That it's, that's really freeing because before Twitter, Jesus was unfollowed. And so there actually was a precedent for being unfollowed. And so if you actually want to do what God calls you to do, you're going to have to be willing to be unfollowed, to actually be willing to stay faithful to what God has called us to do. You're going to have to be willing to be unfollowed, to believe what I believe is not cool. To believe that Jesus Christ is the only way to God that He is the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father but by Him. In 2021 is considered bigoted speech. Exclusive. Hate speech even. But that's the hill I'm dying on. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father but by Jesus And so the deal becomes the degree to which you're willing to be unfollowed is the degree to which you will fulfill the purpose God has for you and is the degree to which you will actually stay on track with continuing to follow Jesus. Because Jesus had to be prepared to be unfollowed so that He could keep following the Father because whatever I see the Father doing, that's what I'm doing I'm here to do the Father's business. And so in our world of notoriety and trying to build your platform and trying to build your followers and trying to build your... The only way ultimately that we're going to do what God's called us to do and to have His light shine through us is to keep following the light. And when you keep following the light, you've got to be prepared that many will stop following you. So arise. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen. 2021, it's our time to arise. It's our time to shine. Because the glory of the Lord is risen upon us and the light of Christ lives within us. But if you and I don't stay connected to Jesus, if you and I don't believe that this is the authoritative Word of God, if you and I do not pursue righteousness and holy living, if you and I are indifferent about the words that we speak and our confession, if you and I care more about how many are following us than how many are not following Jesus, then we're going to lose the potency of that light. Then we might arise, but we ain't shining much. And people will not be being set free and people will not be being saved and people will not be being delivered. But if we dare to do this, man, that's the adventure. If we dare to step into 2021 and here we go and go, okay, Lord, whatever it costs, old school, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The cross before me, (laughs) the world behind me. I'm talking old school, guys. No turning back. No turning back. But if you make the decision not to turn back, you may lose followers. You may lose. I'm not here. This is, I'm not here to go. It's going to be awesome, man. It's going to build your brand. It's going to help your sales. I'm actually saying maybe the opposite. Except you're going to find abundant life. People are going to be set free. So arise. Shine. Here's the good news. I don't need what people are going to give me because Jesus says, oh, no, I'm going to blow you away with what I'm going to pour into your life. (laughs) Chris, you're not going to lack anything, sweetheart. And you know what's going to happen, Chris? People are then going to see how dark the world is around them and they're going to flock to you because they're flocking to me, ultimately. (laughs) They're flocking to me. And so the very thing that we want, we're actually only ever going to get if we're prepared to die. (laughs) It's the only way you can arise. 
Nothing can be resurrected if it's not dead. It has to be dead. So unless you die, you can't be resurrected. <laughs> and then we say, Jesus, I've just decided. So truly that's all I wanted to share with you tonight. That we have to, you're laughing. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> Is that um, if we're willing to do this, go old school, God's going to blow our minds. God's going to blow our minds. Oh, like I believe it with all that's in me. I really do. So why don't we just stand and sing? I have decided to follow Jesus. Thank you. Like <laughs> I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. So I have, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided. To follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back, the cross before, the cross before me.
Just a spark. I wanna be a bonfire. It's not just an ember. I wanna be a flame. It's not just a spark. <laughs> Make me a bonfire. Bold, 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 boldness. Bold, bold.
this bridge one more time. Can we just get rowdy for just a little bit longer? We got like one or two more songs. I feel like this is the thing that we should sing. At the end of the night, I'm gonna give it all. I mean, what is the point of reserving anything back? And giving 99%, we're going all in. So come on, let's sing this one more time. I'll give you all, all of my words.
There's many people in the room tonight that have hard decisions to make coming up. And 
I prophesy that there will be an ease with making that decision. And it will not be easy, but that spirit of ease is gonna come upon you. And you're gonna know that even the hard way is the right way, the hard way is the easy way. <laughs> and so God, we thank you for courage to go your way. When the world's going the other way, God, we go your way, we're going with you. And it is our joy, it is our pleasure, it is our delight to go your way. Because your way is the only way, it is the right way. You are the way, the truth, and the life. And so we choose life. And I prophesy that things that would have died if you had chosen one way, this way, there will be life, there will be life, there will be life even over the dead things and over the dead dreams. We just, we speak resurrection power. Resurrection power, things that you thought were done are actually just ahead. He's been waiting on you just to choose the right way. Make the hard decision, the narrow road. And so God, we thank you for courage, for boldness, and we thank you for authority. You thought you were just saying one yes, but whatever that decision is, it's multiplied. And I just see like a thousand yeses. And because you say yes to this one thing, because you decided this one way, whatever that is for you, there might be one person in the room, it actually is opening up a thousand yeses, a thousand doors, things that have just been waiting on the other side. And I just hear the Father say, thank you. Thank you for coming my way. Thank you for choosing me when it wasn't easy, but thank you for choosing me. I'm proud of you, I love you. So God, thank you for courage, thank you for boldness. And we step into that authority. Like Chris said, we step into that authority. And I thank you that we don't just speak life, we speak resurrection when we open our mouths, that miracles, signs, and wonders come out. And so we don't just walk, but we speak in boldness. We open up our mouths and we prophesy. In this next season, we will see the most dead things come back to life. And we thank you for the thousands upon thousands upon millions of stories that will now know King Jesus because of that yes. Thank you for the salvations that are to come. Thank you that people will know who you are because of what took place tonight and this re-up and us saying yes to you. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for saving us. 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 Now use us and through us, save the world. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.
There's a king 
Father, we thank you tonight for what you've done in each and every one of us. We bless you, Jesus, for what you've done. We thank you. Thank you, God, for what you're doing in every single person. We just say yes and amen to what you're doing in us, what you're doing in the church, what you're doing in the world. Thank you, Father. We just pray for Chris Kane, Father. We bless her in Jesus' name. We thank you for her fire. We just pray for an extra fire. That's scary, but we just pray for more fire for Nick and Chris, Lord. Even their latter days would be more fiery than their, their previous. God, we bless their family and their children. We just thank you for Hillsong. We bless the whole movement of Hillsong, Father. Just cover them, God. I pray for grace and mercy and fresh fire for all of Hillsong, God, that you would just cover them, God. Just spread your wings over them, Father, and cover them, and that you would do what only you can do in that movement. We thank you, and we're behind them. Them, we're for them, and so are you, Jesus. So we bless their whole movement. We bless Pastor Brian and Pastor Bobby in Jesus' name. So, Father, we love you. We thank you for our friends. We thank you for this city, and we just are so thankful for who you are. So I just pray for my friends as they go. I bless all their families, and just that you would lead us and guide us by your Holy Spirit, Jesus, in everything that we say and do. We love you in Jesus' beautiful name. Amen. Amen. We love you. There's a lot of food next door, so please come eat with us because I'm hungry. We love you.